Yeah, man! Hello, my name is Miguel, and today I'm gonna make for you bone in chicken chop soup. You're gonna need a carrot, long carrot like this, a pound of pak choy or bok choy, an onion, stock of scallion, small spring of thyme, three garlic cloves, half scotch bonnet pepper, pepper is optional, tablespoon of white vinegar, tablespoon of sea salt, tablespoon of salt, I use sea salt, tablespoon of dried basil, and a tablespoon of dried parsley, herbs are optional, quarter cup in oil or less, you can use soy sauce, tablespoon between two tablespoons of soy sauce is optional as well, I'll tell you when, when it's best to add it, and today I have these three pieces of chicken stack, you can use any part of the chicken, first Start by preparing your vegetables. The scallion is optional as well. Remove dying leaves from the scallion. Cut off ends. Cut off the root end and the tip of scallion. Do as you see me doing. This is spring of thyme. It's best if you use thyme on the stick, not um, thyme leaf. As for the onion, peel onion. Cut off ends. Remember now, first layer of the onion is the strongest. Remove the brown leaf. I chop onion in half, that way it's easier to handle. As a carrot, it's best if you prepare the carrot close to cooking. Remember now, the herbs are optional. I just use the herbs because I'm doing natural cooking just to spruce the flavor. So now I'm measuring a tablespoon of dried basil. Add a tablespoon of dried parsley as well. You can use any of these herbs fresh. Chop it fine though. Teaspoon of dried pimento berries. Rinse scallion and the spring of thyme properly under fresh running water. You can sprinkle a couple of cup drops of white vinegar to aid to aid cleaning. After that, dice scallion. Onion cut off ends and chop onion in quarters and then separate the leaves. Do as you see me doing. This is bone in chicken chop suey. Keep ingredients separate and in one place. In my case I'm putting all of my ingredients in a bowl. Next, peel garlic cloves. Trim off spoilage. If there's any, Visit jamaicardinners.com for the recipe. Grind garlic to puree or mash it fine. Some scotch bonnet pepper. Rinse the scotch bonnet pepper properly. Remove stem. Cut scotch bonnet pepper in half. Scotch bonnet pepper is optional as well. Do as you see me doing. Use a ladle to cover the bowl properly. That way, fumes and all the nutrients will contain in the bowl. Now, we're going to prepare and wash our bok choy or pak choy properly. Do as you see me doing. Cut off the root end. Add a tablespoon of salt along with water in a bowl. You can use distilled white vinegar instead. Do as you see me doing. Cut off the root end of the pak choy. Add enough water in the bowl. Add your pak choy, bok choy in the bowl. Use your fingers and rub between the stem properly. Remove dirt. Do as you see me doing, take each leaf, use your finger, wash between the stem properly. Make sure that the dirt, make sure there's no dirt on the leaves. Go through one by one and clean each pak choy leaf. Some places call this bok choy. In the Caribbean, we call it pak choy. Pak choy. Remember I was telling you, you can use a tablespoon of distilled white vinegar instead of the salt. So be sure that bok choy leaves are cleaned properly. Make sure that when you buy these bok choy, make sure it's fresh. You can break it easily with your fingers. 
And so once you do that, you see how dirty it is. You see why it's important to wash it before you cook it? Look how dirty this was. Throw the water off, pour fresh water, and give pak choy leaves final rinse. Make sure you wash, wash off the, the chopping board as well. Once you do that, remove excess water. Throw off that water, make sure the bowl is clean. Use a sharp knife. What I like to do, I cut it in half. That, that way it's easier to handle. And then you can use the scissors to chop it in about an inch, inch length. Or half your finger. You can use a food scissors if you're not comfortable using a knife. That's what you want. Cleaned, peared, chopped bok choy or pak choy. Use a lid, cover the bowl properly, put it aside for later. And now I'm gonna prepare chicken's thigh. You can use any part of the chicken, but thigh is best. This chopping board, I haven't used it for a while. So what I like to do is drizzle several drops of distilled white vinegar and wipe the surface before I use it. After you rinse it, of course, after you wash it properly. Now, this is my chicken's thigh. These are just some chicken sty that they sell in by themselves. Price was reasonable, so I just buy them. I'm smelling the chicken for freshness. I also smelled it in the in the supermarket, you know. I put my nose up right on the plastic and smell it and make sure it's fresh. Don't have a rotten smell. Usually the chicken sty is a little bit more messy. Use your finger, get between the chicken sty and remove locked blood. Trim off excess fat. Do as you see me doing. Clean your chicken's thigh properly. I like to remove the skin, so I just use my fingers and rip it off. Rip the chicken's skin off the chicken's thigh. If you like skin, you can always keep it. So get between the chicken's thigh, trim off excess fat. You can leave a little bit of fat on it, you know, but the, where, it's, where there's a lot of fats, a lot of fat on the chicken's thigh, just kind of trim that off. I just smelled it for freshness again. This piece of chicken thighs is fresh. All right, so once you do that, add the chicken thigh to the bowl and throw this mess out. Now, we're gonna wash our chicken thigh. Add enough water in a bowl, drizzle three between four tablespoons of distilled white vinegar depending on how fresh the chicken is. The chicken is fresh, 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 like they, they just um, butchered it. Then you probably can add just a tablespoon. But if it's not so fresh, add three between four tablespoons and use your finger and wash between the chicken's thigh properly. At the end of the day, you want clean chicken's thigh. You can use chicken's breast, even chicken's wing. The breast is the white meat and the chicken thigh is dark meat. Most people like the dark meat, it tends to be more flavorful. All right, so do as you see me doing. Move that water and pour on fresh water and give the chicken thigh a final rinse. Next, use your hand and squeeze it ever so gently. Remove excess water. If you have a colander, you can put it in a colander and allow it to drain. It's not necessary. Give this bowl a final rinse. Wash out all that muck that we just. This is boning chicken now. We're not gonna deep bone it. All you need to do is chop the chicken's thigh an inch between two in length. Do as you see me doing. Use a steak knife. Just chop the chicken. What I do is get, there's a groove between, there's two pieces of bone. There's a bone like in between the groove. That's where I, I go right between the groove of the chicken's thigh and then cut that. And then each other piece I cut that in half. So you can use your, just cut the surface and then use your, your elbow, your hand to hit it. That way it cuts through the bone. Just be cautious. And if you're not comfortable using your hand, you can always use a hammer. This is what you want, paired, cleaned, boning chicken. Now would be a good time to add a tablespoon of salt. I use sea salt. Use both cover it properly, put it aside for later. Next, put to heat, put the stove's gauge on four, medium low. Put to heat, this is a, a large saucepan. 
you can use a wok if you so desire. I don't have a wok right now. Be sure the inside of the saucepan is dry or you can use a paper towel and clean it out. After a minute on heat, there's no water in the saucepan, add cooking oil. I use coconut oil. Measure and add a quarter cup of coconut oil or a little bit less than quarter cup. This spoon that I'm using measures quarter cup or a little bit less. You just want enough oil to fry the chicken's pieces. Don't want to use plenty of oil because flavor of the chicken is gonna go in the oil and we're not gonna remove any of this oil. After a minute between two and you see a little smoke like this, that's a sign to say it's ready for frying. Would you see me doing? Take each chicken's piece and lay it on the saucepan's bottom in the heating oil. Put each piece on the bottom in its own little space on the bottom of the saucepan in the eating oil. Once you put it in the pot, it, it's gonna stick a little. Just allow it, don't worry about it. Just allow. Allow for four minutes. Stove gauge is on four, medium low. Allow to fry golden on one side. After four minutes, this is what you want. Use a cooking fork and flip each chicken piece on the other side. It might stick a little. Don't worry about it. Just get beneath the chicken's pieces and flip the chicken's pieces. One at a time. Alright, you want it to fry and have this nice golden color. The stove gauge is on four still, all this time allow. After four minutes, eight minutes in all, this is what it looks like. You do as you see me doing and kind of flip each chicken. Or you can stir with a, a cooking spoon and stir it in. And you kind of want to remove the sticking pieces now. Make sure all the pieces are or not are cooked with a nice golden color. Right after that, add your chopped onions. Some people might ask, why didn't I saute or um, marinate the chicken with the, the seasoning? But it's not necessary. That's why I don't do it. And some people might say cross-contamination. Add your chopped scallion. Remember now the scallion is optional. Add your dried fermented berries. If you don't have fermented berries, if fermented berries are not available in your region, don't worry about it. Add your spring of thyme. Do as you see me doing. Stir it in a few times. Add the herbs, a tablespoon of dried basil, a tablespoon of dried parsley. Stir it in thoroughly, coating the chicken pieces. Next, Measure and add a tablespoon of distilled white vinegar. Stir it in. Now, put the stove gauge on two. Like low, but two. Not low, low enough, but two. After that, add the chopped scallion. If you wanted to use soy sauce, now would be a good time to add two tablespoons of soy sauce. Just pour it on top and leave it. For another dinner idea, you can use the soy sauce. Stove gauge is on two. Use the pan's lid. Cover it properly. Allow. You added the scotch. You saw me add the scotch bonnet pepper. Allow. Now would be a good time to prepare your carrot. Wash it properly. Just rinse it off properly. You can sprinkle a couple drops of distilled water, distilled white vinegar if you so desire. Wash it off properly. 
use a knife and scrape the surface of the carrot clean. Cut off ends. Give your carrot a final rinse, a fresh running water. You can do this two ways. You can cut little wheels or you can cut carrot sticks. Do as you see me doing. You saw me cut the carrot in three pieces. Then I use, then I cut each piece in half and then cut two inches carrot sticks. Once you do that, gather the carrot and a plate. Put it aside for later. After two minutes, this is what it looks like. Use a cooking spoon and stir in the pot a few times. Flip the chicken to the top and the bok choy to the bottom. Keep the pepper on top. You want to watch it. You don't want this meal to be spicy, too spicy. And the pepper is optional. You can use red pepper instead if you don't have access to scotch bonnet. After four minutes in total, since we added the the bok choy. This is what it looks like. Now would be a good time to remove this half scotch bonnet pepper. Now would be a good time to add the carrot sticks. Stir it in a few times. That's it. Carrot need not cook. Turn the stove off. Use the saucepan lid. Cover it until serving. So you see this is a big meal but it's cooked very easy. All right, before serving, stir your pot in. It's best if you serve a minute or two after cooking. That way, you serve the pak choy crunchy. So take a scoop of this nice bone and chicken chop suey and add it on a plate of rice. You, I see some people use cabbage mixed with the pak choy. You can do that as well. And you can also add anything that you know goes with chop suey in this meal as well. Just add it near to the end. So this is bone in chicken chop suey. Visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe. Subscribe, like and share. Bone in chicken chop suey. This is a lovely meal. You will enjoy it. Bone in chicken chop suey. Time to sample this thing. I'm just gonna pour some more gravy on top. And remember now, you can always add soy sauce right after you add it. After you add it, the pak choy. A tablespoon, between two tablespoons of soy sauce would be great for another dinner idea. All right, so this is how you want your Pak choy to be cooked. This is very delicious. I personally love pak choy. This meal is flavorful. The pak choy is crunchy. It goes well with rice. When I buy this in the restaurant, I often take it with lo mein. The carrot is nice and crunchy. The chicken is flavorful and clean. It's not spicy at all. Scotch bun and pepper kind of give it a little flavor. I 
I would say this is an easy meal. It didn't take me no more than 15 minutes to cook this meal, I would say. Most of the work is in the preparation, which is good because you want to prepare your food properly for cooking. I'm enjoying this meal. I just want to taste this bok choy some more. You can eat this. You can eat this bone and chicken bok choy with 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 rolls with bread. Or crackers. You don't necessarily have to use rice. Some people eat it by itself. chicken is cooked. Alright. Thanks for watching. I'm gone. Yeah, man!